Hey, hey, hey. Sorry for the delay, guys. A little change of pace today. I'm not at the office. My kids are sick. It's a whole thing. So I'm at home today. So here we are. We have absolutely crushed it this past week from this stream. I really hope you guys are taking these trades and making this money because it's been absolutely unbelievable. Just to recap a few of these before we dive deep into it. Let me switch this over. Um we absolutely crushed the spy. You guys can see here. These are the fours. Is this the 470? Yep. These are the four seventies that we've got. We're up 178% there. Absolutely phenomenal trade. Remember, we were targeting the March expiration on these. These are now in the money as spy crossed over 470. So I am going to start taking profit on these here and here and now, not this moment, obviously, but Today, I sold one of them. I'm going to keep the other two until tomorrow in the next couple of days just to see what kind of run we get and see what kind of money we're going to make. Our next play was the PayPal debit spread. This thing has been north of 60% for quite a while. You're up to 72% today on this one. Um, this is a phenomenal, phenomenal put spread to sell. Um, again, we are just sitting and waiting while these depreciate and we are capturing that return. For loaning out a little bit of money, absolutely great return on investment. You can't ask for more than 72%. I am going to start looking at closing these out regardless of uh, the action today. We're just north of that $60 strike, which is quality. So we are pretty much looking golden as ever as these are out of the money to close these out, take some profit. And our most recent one, we added this on Friday. We've already gotten a huge return here, uh, north of 50% on Amazon. Um, these were up quite a bit today and uh, obviously came back down as Amazon had a decent day. So uh, two and a half percent on the day, which is you can't ask for more. So we are currently crushing on these. Like I said, oh, I was looking for my target was about 30 percent on these and we are looking at over 48 percent. That's just a couple of the trades that we've been playing here in the discord. If you guys aren't in, um, I'll put this banner up so you guys can create your account, get in there. It's free. Um, if you're new, please type new in the chat so we can send you over some free stuff uh, that we have our beginner trader pack. And then if you are been with us a while, drop your Discord username so we know who's who. We can thank you for showing up. And we're always doing swag raffles and giveaways and stuff like that. For those of you that have been with us for quite a while, I want you guys to get some free stuff. It has been a long time since I have uh, done this from this office. It's interesting. I've done this from home quite a while. Ruben, nice to meet you, man. We got a new guy right here. We're going to get you squared away. Uh, the website's down at the bottom. Make sure to create your free account. Get that watch list going. That's a phenomenal tool. Start you up every week with all of the best information on the whole market. And then we're going to wait till the end of this stream, Ruben, right at about near right before in about 30, 30, 40 minutes, we're going to do some giveaways. Um, so you're in. Now that you type new in the chat, you're in there. Just stick around. Uh, if you want, you can drop your email in the chat or Nikki can drop hers so that you can just shoot an email to that address and that way we know you're entered and we can send you the stuff. It's great to meet you, my friend. You're going to make some money here with us. So like I said, guys, the Amazon trade was brilliant. We closed it. So that's just a tally. That's a 50% just about on the Amazon put spread. That's a passive options trade. That was just all we do is we, we open the trade once, we sit, we wait, and then we close the trade and we collect our money. Then we have the PayPal trade, which we opened a few weeks ago. This is up over 72%. Same idea. We just open the trade. We sit, we wait, we collect, and we make that bread. And then the 470 calls on the SPY, we've absolutely crushed that. I mean, our prediction was uh, we, we crushed it. Look at this up, 133% past month. We're up 178%. So we were ahead of this big run. We were talking about this playback in October when we first identified SPY bottoming out around 410 uh, which it did, and it's boomed since there. So it's been it's been a good it's been a good two months, guys, for us. Um, Jeremy Dennis, new. You don't seem new, my friend. I've seen you quite a few times, but feel free to drop your email anyway, so that we can get you plugged in there, and get you access. Maybe we'll uh, we'll do an extra giveaway and giveaway to you for two of you. Um, so let's dig into the market. I just wanted to do a quick recap for those of you that were following along with the trades so you can see how they went and you could obviously take your profit and make your decisions for yourself. But I'd like to also be transparent, showing you what I'm doing as far as when I'm holding for how long and when I look to take profits. So we have Tesla here. Excuse all the, the madness on the chart. We're going to go ahead and close the stocks buddy out, even though it's been crushing. So Tesla price action today, we're right here. Uh, remember, we talked about the bullish case breaking above resistance here, and we have maintained that until we get this inverted hammer right here. 
So this is one that I'm going to watch play out. Look at the last time we saw a similar setup. We broke above resistance, had this inverted hammer, although on the downside, so slightly different. Inverted hammer to sell off and then consolidation right around 245. So you can see our range is identified here on this chart, right? In between these green lines, we expect price to interact with each of these lines, right? So if it's above, if the price is currently below where this green line is, that means that green line is going to be resistance and or the ceiling. Just imagine you're walking through a room. The ceiling is as high as you could go and the floor is as low as you can go. Same concept here. This bottom line is the floor. This top line is the ceiling. Once we break through this line right here, this becomes the floor and this becomes the ceiling, just like you're climbing floors in an apartment room. You take the elevator up, you're on the next floor, and so on and so on. With Tesla, what we can realistically expect here is, is to see, hopefully, a sideways day tomorrow. If we don't and we see more downside, then that means we could expect to come as low as about 245. If that's the case, this is going to be on a tight watch. I think there's some opportunity for calls there. Um, to make some money on the upside that, that we do see coming. There's been some great, straight, strong buying coming in over the last couple of days from December 13th all the way through the 18th. As you can see, this is about our median and volume, right? Where you can see this line right here. Um, and we are above that on the buy side ever since these three days here. Here, you can see an in, in increase in that, in that buy side volume. Uh, again, if the average is right around here. Look at all those green knobs right above that, right? We saw sellers here. We're seeing buyers here, 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 and here, which bodes well to anyone that's trading the upside on Tesla, which I, I do expect to see. Um, going into the SPY, we're going to come up with our two options trades on the SPY. We have crushed, absolutely crushed. I'll leave it to Mike to – Mike, I don't know if you want to post in there. Uh, what was the trade, the bull trade that we had last week? I'm sure it's up a couple hundred percent. Uh, in the short term, uh, as our we were targeting, we were targeting four. What was it? Four seventy twelve, just about. Um, on the next trade, we talked about holding up above four sixty nine on that daily candle, and and then that's exactly what we did, and we bounced right from that range that we identified all throughout today. See, so we bounced right on that range, came to the upside four seventy two new high, uh, not new high, excuse me. So. 473.72 is our high, but right on trend. So again, the trend is your friend. Always follow the trend line. Always trust the trend line. It is exactly what you need. I do like seeing this bump in RSI here relative to the last time we saw the high where we didn't really push above 91. Uh, we don't see new high in price. We do see new high in RSI, so we might see some continuation in tomorrow, maybe one more impulse up before we do find some downside and consolidation because, again, we've been coming up since December uh, 7th. We've seen pretty solid green. So keep that in mind as you're uh, playing this here. Um, so our first opportunity tomorrow is is the bullish case since we are trading above support. So if we open anywhere pretty much above 471 and a quarter, we will be trading above resistance. I want you to watch this – or sorry, support. I want you to watch this support line and treat this as your absolute support. This bullish case and this bullish trade we're going to outline here is only, only valuable and relevant with, oh, wow. So this is the 458 call. So you almost 4X your money. You did pretty much four times your money. Your money quadrupled in less than two weeks. Boom, on that last trade. Beautiful. Um, we, need like a, we need like a sports center recap of that, Michael. If we can get that. I don't know if that's possible. That'd be badass. So anyway, um, close this up here so you guys know what I'm looking at for those of you that, that recap and watch back. So again, we're gonna we are going to identify our options trade here. We're gonna build an options trade. Um, so you can see that we're going to the options chain on the spy. We're gonna give ourselves I think shorter would be okay for this because this is only going to really be a very short-term trade. So I'd be okay going January 5th. And so to go back to the chart here, we're going to flip a few times just to build this trade together so you guys know exactly what I'm looking at and exactly what to expect. So let's say that we open on the SPY right around this range right here. Um, let's see what color this is actually. Oh, it's white. Perfect. So if we open right here, we are going to expect an open right around here. If we hit support, 471 and a quarter just about, 
that will be our entry for this trade that we're looking at right now. It would be reasonable to expect that we test resistance, which we can see right here, 473, just, just above 473 and a quarter, which was the high of the body of those candles, right? So we're going to identify that as our resistance. So if we're buying off the support bounce, 471 and a quarter, just about, we would expect upward consolidation for a moment from here. Oh, don't want to do that. Let me move back to where it was. If we get off support here, what we can expect is a bounce, and then we should see an impulse up to test that 473, which is we went shorter because this will this will likely only carry over as a day trade. It's not something I would hold or expect a long-term result from. This is uh, We're pretty high up here right now, and this strength is, is great, but – it does carry a, a lot more risk than we're usually doing when we're swinging. So let's let's play this safe because if we do get the test up, right, so the bull case, we hit support, we impulse up, we hit 473, and we break, we're going to find a new high. And that high will probably be around 475 to 476, which means that this option trade that we're building here is going to be uh, extremely valuable. So these are coming in. We have a strong delta there. That's good. Applied volatility, very low. Also very good. So it means these are underpriced. And as we get closer, you'll see the implied volatility go up a little bit. Um, let's see what it looks like in the money. No, it's not not crazy, actually. Might have to go a little shorter than this if we give ourselves 10 days. Let's see. E low V, less delta. The 474 has better delta. Although we do want that increase. We want that delta to escalate because it's going to give us our value. So I can live with the 475. So we'll look at this this 475 right here. As you can see, well, it's still watch list. This is the December 28th 475 call to be purchased um, when we hit support. So to go back to the chart here. So well, what I'm talking about here is when we open, we might get a small push up. We come down to support around 471, just above 471 and a quarter. That would be the opportunity to buy that contract. Um, and let me look at the expiration. This December 28th. So that is the specific contract that we're looking at there, that 475 call, 1228 expiration. And we would be looking to jump in that at support, as you can see, drawn out right here. Uh, as we push up, we're we looking to scale out as we hit just above 473. We should see some nice escalation, take 10, 20% there. If we push up and we do go in the money 475, we'll be selling right when we start to hit just below 475. It would not take chances with it um, because it's probably, if we do get an impulse up and we hit, I think it's very likely that we hit and get a harsh rejection and we come down and maybe see 470. I could see, a, realistically, I could see a pretty strong impulse down. Um, look at the, the breadth of these moves, right? Anytime you see those big moves up, just know that on the downside, you could see that same breadth of a move in terms of volatility up or down on the downside too. So trade that very carefully, very safe. That's our bull case. That's what we're looking at. Now our bear case... It's definitely not the same as doing this on the desktop. It's a lot cleaner, a lot easier. But you get what you get. So our bear case will be quite simple. We get the same kind of open, but on this test, we come below, I'd say below 471, and then we come back up and we hit support right here just above 471 and, and change, right? Or we go a little further and we test again below this support line so we break it we hold but then we test it back to the upside if we get that rejection so we come down we test it when we get rejection here so if you're on like say the the 30 minute chart right which would be pretty reasonable to use for this type of trade and you get a candle that comes down and closes below this line watch for another candle to come up and close go to the upside but close below this support line which means that this support line just became resistance. We will buy on that confirmation and we will trade the downside, which will likely be 468 or so. 
I mean, realistically, I could see as low as 464 if we get like a strong move down. Spy loves moving between 10 and $13 a move. So it's not unrealistic to, to think we'd see that big of a move. And in that bear case, we're going to go a little further out because I think if we get that bear case tomorrow, we're going to see continuation on that trade um, through the next week or so, which means it could go for another day or two. So we're going to be looking at puts. Um, we're going to the options chain again. We're looking at January 12th. I do like here. Um, puts. I like 468. I can get with this tight spread. Decent open interest. I could see this being. And we got 25 days on it. So you got a little more safety here. Um, plus it's down 17% on the day, which is a good sign. So these are coming in at about 310 since they're out of the money. So a little price a little more. A little more high than uh, the calls, but those will work. So um, January, so 112.24. That's our bear case there. Do, do, do. We go back to the chart. So again, just to just to identify to how do how do I know whether it's a bear entry or a bull entry? Well, I went through the bull entry. This is the bear entry, right? We break below support. We try to fight our way back up. We hit resistance, and that candle closes below that support, below that resistance. It might come up again, but either way, I'm buying on that confirmation, and then I'm selling the downside. I would say that worst case scenario, we come down and test 469, and then 468 and a half. I would definitely sell as you get right near in the money. So just out of just at the money, um, these should be up a nice 20, 30%. It'll be great trade, easy day trade, possible overnight hold. If we close or we are looking to close below 468 and a half, I am going to hold on to these uh, and see if we test 464. Um, Cause it's, it's very realistic given how much we've pushed to the upside that we do see that test very low volume today. So I don't trust it all that much. Uh, so those are the trades that I'd be looking at on the spy uh, in the coming days. I think that they'll be they'll be good. Um, so quick pause feedback. Is that is that clear? Is everybody understanding that? Does that make sense? And does it? What are your guys' thoughts? I mean, do you think you guys vote voting bear or bull on the spy? I mean, where are you at? Short term. What are you thinking? What are you thinking happens here? Drop it in the comments. Let me know. I want to see where everyone's heads at with this one. You think we're we're going bear? Or we're going bull. What are your thoughts? Mm -mm -mm. You're bearable right now in the short term. Flat. Interesting. I could also see flat. Right along that 470, I could very much so see that. Nice flat, kind of up, down. This is like a nice tight range, maybe 471 to 469. I could definitely see a flat flat return for a few days. That's definitely possible. We got to gank. It says bull, Jason, leaning bearish. Bull for short. So bear. Mike says bullish continuation, but anything can use it for remaining too down. Agreed. Agreed. So there you have it. We're not going to lose either way. That's the beauty. You follow the, the, the trend is your friend and you just follow the analysis. And now we've got a trade for both directions. You know exactly how to enter it, when to enter it and what play to take. Um, at least what I'll be doing. Uh, and that way you guys can really dial in and, and capitalize on this market. Even if you're new, I, my goal is to make this so simple that even someone with very little experience can follow these trades, execute them and make money, which is, I think what we've accomplished here more than anything else. So, <clears throat> also something to keep in mind 
start getting the tickers in your head of exactly which ones you want to cover for a game of Smash or Pass. Try to think of three tickers that you want me to look at very quickly. We just go through them and decide whether or not we're willing to go long where it's at. Um, it's just a quick, deep dive, fun way to kind of get into some of these charts you guys have been looking at and see whether or not it makes sense to jump in on the trade. So start getting those in the back of your head. Don't type them just yet. Just get them in the back of your head for when we get there, for when we arrive. So let's go take a look at something that I know has been on everyone's mind, and that is NVIDIA pushing to unreal highs here. Um, this has been one of our, our best trades, and just to show you that I'm not uh, – just I, I think for the sake of transparency, I like it just because you need to know. How do you trust this? Where is it? So we went long on NVIDIA a long time ago. Uh, we're This trade is up. I mean, I've obviously taken profit from here, but it's, it's up almost 2,000%. We were going long on this bad boy uh, when it was trading down at like, what was it, 140? No, that's, that's the 400s. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. Damn, we got to zoom in. So we were buying down here, and we saw 130s, 140s back in early, uh, late to, late 22. Um, after we saw that run up, it was a great opportunity to buy. For those of you that haven't used Stocks Buddy yet, just to give you a, a point of reference here, um, Stocks Buddy Alert was at like 138 bucks. Um, before that, at 40 with two secondary entries and a take profit given at 320, and then it gave the bull. Uh, bull signal again right around 140 and has uh, shown us their support 395, which I agree with. Um, so if you guys haven't checked this out, you definitely need to get you some. This thing's unbelievable. So our targets were 500, 570, and then 737 in the long run. Um, there's a huge opportunity here still for upside, but I would argue that entry at this point in time would be quite risky. Uh, if you don't have exposure to this one already, Buying here would be it, – it carries a lot of risk, and I, and I definitely am not buying more at this point in time. Again, we bought in about 130, 140. Uh, we expected tons of upside. Now, I'll be very straight with you. Did not expect to see the kind of run that we did in the period of time we did, but we were expecting 300, 350, maybe even 400 on that trade when we called that out back in August uh, on the downside when we were trading down. Uh, too much valuable there, too much value there. Huge company. They've scaled very well. Cloud business is just a stupid business to be in as far as making money. People are basically front loading cash, and then you just scale your resources to boot. So it's genius business to be in, um, not, and that's the same, including the chip processor stuff, AI stuff there on top of their game. So huge opportunity there. We made a lot of money on that trade. Uh, going forward again, if the bull case continues long term, my vision would be 570 and then 737. I, I, I think the chart justifies it. Last time we saw high on our side, we were pushing 94. We haven't yet eclipsed that. Uh, I would love to see our side push that hard on demand, which would, in my opinion, get us to about 570 or so, which is realistic considering that's now only 10% from here. So huge opportunity. Uh, I'm glad we capitalized on it, made some money on it. Um, like I said, I'm going to follow the stocks, but the analysis here because I would tend to agree that where this flag started to form around three, four, call it 400 for psychological psychology's sake, that that would be a pretty critical uh, support to hold. And that's where I'd watch for any type of bear opportunity to emerge. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do break there, I would definitely go bear till 290 or so, which I think that trade would, would crush. But when we get there, we'll get there. Um, I'll take a look. Apple was one on my list anyway. And then get those tickers ready. We'll get in and play some smash or pass. Look at the tickers you want to see. Ooh, Stocks Buddy just gave another bull signal on the monthly for Apple. Very interesting. This is one I've looked through the Stocks Buddy profile extensively. Last one was 78 to 180. And then this one was 148 to 200. So nice $50 move. Uh, just flagged bull again after holding at support which means that we should see at least a $40, $50 upside from here. Uh, remember, we went long those those Apple calls. I think they were 205 is kind of a lotto flyer play, which let's see, maybe those hit the money if the monthly uh, if the money monthly chart continues to turn up here. 
I don't see new new high on our side, which is a little spooky to me. But again, I'm gonna trust uh, trust in the trade, trust in the analysis. It's good stuff. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, bum, bum. So that's Apple. Um, another one I've gotten a lot of questions about is AMD. Remember, we've charted this one. We took uh, this this trade ran like 600%. We bought calls right on the break of 100. We're currently trading at 138. My equities target, I believe, was 130. So we've already eclipsed that. Again, that's a 30% trade on equities. That was posted to our members. If you're not in the Discord, that one trade, if you traded that with 1000 bucks, you made 300 uh, more than covered the cost. And then some, uh, we broke this resistance here. And now we're pushing to the top of this range, which is right about 150. I'm not touching this until we break above that and find new highs. I mean, this thing is just going to follow NVIDIA around like a kid on the playground. Uh, other than that, I don't think we're going to see too much crazy upside here on AMD in the short term, enough so to warrant the risk to take uh, an options or equities trade from here. Again, we're, we've been in it for a while. Uh, for those of you that got the Discord alert, the, the smart buy was the breakout over 100. Um, past that, I'm not messing with it. So that was a great trade. I've really enjoyed that. It's made us some nice money. Um, I think it was one of our better trades in a while as far as just like nailing the entry. Uh, it looked perfect from that breakout as you can see that was our channel right here from 74 to 99 and when we found support read it about the mid 90s uh, it made this a no-brainer because again this was kind of shelf support all the way through all the price action all the way dating back to the breakout in august when we finally hit this resistance we've traded in this range very tightly when we break out of this range we tend to see really strong upside so we're just playing the trend against itself uh, which to me is the best way to trade because you're using that data to create new trade ideas that are based on uh, things of the old. So, yeah, that was a hell of a trade, and we made some good money there. I really liked that one. Really, really liked it. Dun, 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 dun. Um, oh, that's one everyone's asking. So for those of you who didn't see, Japanese steel company purchased U.S. Steel. Uh, the ticker is X, uh, and it is ripping right now. Um, well, looks like stocks, buddy, was ahead of the trend, called the bull signal at 24. So if you would following stocks, buddy, you doubled your money already. Uh, if you're following me, you're not. Um, God bless machines. Uh, trading up the highs of 197 back in 2007. Uh, this thing does have a gap to fill, and it's got it's got upside. I would argue that the upside is definitely ninety dollars plus. So still, twice uh, I would say sixty two dollars is the real battle. So from here, about forty percent upside. Um, volume is tapering off a little bit. We do have a new high confirmed by RSI, which is great. Once again, if you don't have stocks, buddy, I'll drop the link because you need to get get you some bull signal at twenty five. Um, also, bull signal at seven. A uh, few times, and every every bull and bear entry crushed and moved for probably twenty percent. But this last one, phenomenal. Um, there's a lot of you have been asking about how do you get stocks, buddy? Where do you get it? So let me just give you the link rather than mess around. Um, I think you can access it just through the website. I'll see. Thanks. Um, just remember, if you're a premium member already, just ask about it in the Discord because we got a special price for you guys. Obviously, you're in the club, so. You get that love price. Um, so U.S. Steel is one to continue to watch. Um, it's been on uh, pretty crazy upside since then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Same with Netflix. This is one of our best trades. Uh, we we're buying this at 200 when we broke above one. We we're buying this at breakout over 200. Um, it's since doubled, uh, trading to 486, just cleaning out that gap. Um, we did have some $500 2024 calls. For those of you, I closed those a while ago, but if you're still holding them, you absolutely crushed it. Um, yeah, we can pull up CVNA. Um, start dropping those tickers in the chat. We're going to play a little smash or pass. It, we're basically just looking at whether or not it's time to go long. If you drop the tickers in the chat, I do a quick analysis, and we talk about it to see if it's time for that baby to rip and run or if it's time to walk away. Uh, so drop those in the chat. All I ask is that you leave one per comment. Feel free to leave three or four. Just each type of each in their own comments I can put up on the screen. Um, this was another uh, absolute banger crushed trade. 
I think where did we get this? We took there it is where I circled. We talked about the breakout over eleven bucks. This thing went to fifty four, so it's a five hundred percent run from there. And then we talked about the support bounce right where stocks, buddy. I think my support bounce is more around twenty five, right here off these two. So I was talking about twenty one dollars support bounce. It came just about twenty two um, cents doubled. Um, cup and handle form in there. Boom. Now it's on the upside. Um, you missed the trade on this if you haven't been it already. So I would not chase this one, but absolute banger. Jeremy, my man, get that stock, buddy, baby. That's the best way to do it. That tool is exotic. Okay, premium with it, and that's you got it all in one place. You got all the plays to trade, and you got the analysis to follow in the meantime. That's a good deal, man. Um, all right, Ruben. Mara, let's take a look, my friend. That's another one. Uh, I believe we we're talking about the breakout over eight bucks on that one. Um, nope, we're buying at 502. There it is because it's still, I leave it on my chart. So, this was the buying. This is where the opportunity was to buy breakout on 571. Uh, in 20, it ran to so that's a thousand percent from that one. Um, we've recently been watching when we came back down here again. This is what we we're watching for. We always want to trade smart with stuff like this. You don't ever want to be chasing it down below, but we do know that if it stays above 571, that we're going to see upside. So we've been waiting. You got the consolidation, the opportunity to buy around five, six bucks, pushed up to about 20. So that's about 400% return. We are back at about 20. Um, Stocks Buddy also nailed this one. I would say posted the buy at $8.42. You basically would have more than doubled your money there. Um, Long-term thinking though on this one, I would say that if we continue to see this kind of volume, we are very much so heading for 44 bucks. Our first real test is going to come at 27. That's where you can see all this buying was eaten up and then shoved back down before. Our first test is really going to be that area right around there. So call it 27, 28 bucks is we're really going to see, in my opinion, the, the greatest resistance. Um, this thing does love to channel. So you can see here that it pushes in between these channels quite a bit. But when it does break 28, it likes to go to 50 plus. And if you go back in time, um, post IPO, this thing was at 140, 150 bucks. So volume is exponentially greater than it was back then. So I think the upside here is even further. But I would expect to see the $28 test first. Once we go there, I would buy the breakout over 28, trade this bad boy to 52, 53 bucks, double your money, double your fun, um, and even hold some for the upside. I think all of these companies with the Bitcoin exposure, crypto mining, et cetera, um, it really is just something else. I don't know what this means, but I, I absolutely love it. What's up, man? How you living? Um, so that's what I think for Mara. That's what I would do there. I think uh, just you're new, so I'll tell you this. I never buy in no man's land. So we got the top of the range, like we described the ceiling, and then we got the floor. I don't ever buy when something's right in the middle because my downside risk is too great versus my upside reward is just it's disproportionate every time i risk a dollar 50 on a trade i want to be able to make three dollars at least that's two to one right ideally every time i risk one dollar i have the upside at three dollars which means i'm risking a dollar every time to make three which i'll take that trade any day of the week because that is efficiency at scale you don't ever want to be risking one dollar to make a dollar just doesn't make sense because then you're forced to win too much you want to position yourself so that you only have to win half the time. It means you only have to be right 50% of the time. If you can do that, you will crush this market. Because if you're only risking a dollar to make three, that means if you lose half the time, you're still extremely profitable. Because you only lose one dollar half the time, but you make three the other half, right? So it's a net differential of two dollars, which means you'll always be net positive and you'll see significant returns. Course tick breezy's got a bunch of them. All right, so let's get in it. So drop that ticker in the chat. I'll run through it. We play a game of smash or pass. I'm assuming this one's yours. Unfortunately, I would say right here I can't smash this, even though I absolutely love it and it's bullish. The smash was as we outlined the breakout over six bucks. Um, so unfortunately for right now, I'm gonna have to pass until we hit that twenty-eight dollar mark. Uh, it's just not. It's not the opportunity to to buy here, in my opinion. You're taking too much risk. So I'm going to put that a little more on. Nope, I typed it wrong. It's supposed to be pass. You can edit it, Mike. It's my bad. It's supposed to be pass. 
just type smash because I'm hyped up. All right, Baba. Uh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Uh, I hate to say it, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fight stocks buddy on this one. So stocks we saying bearish on the monthly. Uh, if you go to the daily, we're seeing a bull signal. Let's see what the weekly says. Ugh, also bear. So here's what I like right now. A, long-term exposure. But B, I am willing to buy on this, just to be very clear on my intentions. I'm willing to buy down to the low 60s here because this is a long-term trade for me. As you can see, we've we've tested that bottom before. We were down at like 60 or so back in 2016. We've come down in 2022 to, what is it, 62, 63 and change. I think that Baba is undervalued. The Chinese market does carry risk and – there's always the political undertone of the moves they make and a number of other things. So be mindful of that going into this, but I'm definitely still a buyer here in the seventies. We have some leaps out on this and I have been buying equity in the low seventies. What I want to see is a stable and consistent hold over 81. So I am buying below. This is a slightly different, different strategy, taking out a little more risk. I am buying below. If you want to trade this safe, you wait until we break out over 81 and you buy the breakout. I personally am willing to buy down to 61 bucks. I think that below there, I'm willing to cut my losses. But other than that, I think that realistically, we've seen our bottom. It's head and shoulders has played out. It's now time to see It's time to see a little more upside. We've had the buyers coming in here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Buyers have been coming in for a while. So it's just a matter. Institutions are just buying little by little, little by little, cost averaging in, right? I want to buy along with them. I think that with – what we see right here, we have confirmation of an attempt at a reversal. We look at our side, just again, trading should be simple. You should be able to draw horizontal lines and look at one indicator to be able to tell the difference. Our side was down to about 14, price was down to about 57, 58. Right here, our side just touched and oversold at 18, only came down to about 70 bucks. So if price holds here, our side holds here. I think we're seeing the beginning of a reversal and I think we're going to see some upside. And I think the realistic possibility of seeing 120 on the upside is, is there, which means we could take, you know, 50 to 70% ROI on this trade in just a few months. And then if we get the upside, I'm anticipating long-term, we're going to see this up back North of 150, which means we're going to have a hundred percent plus return on this trade. So So right now I'm, I'm going to smash that because it just looks too damn good. Another one from the Breeze Master. Beam. Beam Global. What? I think he asked about this one once before. This chart is crazy. Oh, it's pretty decent. It's a consolidation of 0657. Otherwise, this range is like 461. Volume looks real thin, though. Yeah, only, this is very low volume. Ooh, I kind of want to smash this. So was it 540? God, if we would have got a new high, I would have said absolutely, but the volume's so thin here. Let's see what old Stocks Buddy says. Stocks Buddy's a bull now. Let's go to the monthly, sorry. Stocks Buddy's a bear on the monthly, huh? You know, we're playing with that support right there. Until we get that breakout over eight. I would agree with that. Unfortunately, I think the risk here is going to outweigh the reward, especially with something like this, finding new lows, low volume. I don't even know what this company does. I guess that matters too. So let's, let's check this out. Let's see what the old beam does. <laughs> Hmm. It's got $25, $30 upsides, Beam and yours. What does this company do, Beam? 
technology and solar. I mean, this is such a cyclical business. This is brutal. Short flow, 14%. $88 million market cap. Strong sales growth, but EPS negative, negative growth. Institutions have been exiting while they raised the price targets. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know about this, man. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Institutions peeling out while uh, price targets get raised. There's a little bit of a red flag, and the setup isn't good enough for me, in my opinion. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this one a. Sometimes you just gotta choose your health, and this ain't it, unfortunately. All right, I'll look at this. What is this, Jeremy Ebix? I don't know what the hell is this. Also NASDAQ. Oof. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. That's a hard pass. That chart looks abysmal. You gotta get on out of there. Get on out of there right now. No thanks, man. Look at that. That's brutal. That's reverse split waiting to happen. Hey, we're going to give you more value, AK. We're going to dilute you down to nothing. So I would stay the hell away from that. That is no good. No good at all. TACAC, NOC. Never even heard of it. Oh, you're going You're going to that Northrop Grumman. Isn't this like an old school media company kind of deal? God, that setup is rough, though. I, I do not like that. go from gap down that's a nice range but in that range my friend i did not wish to but take if we we're trading at the bottom of this range maybe low 440s i'd maybe say smash but fortunately we're in no man's land so it's not until we push uh we push we push we push higher that we're gonna see any any real value there for us to trade on the upside so uh I'm going to have to give it a pass. It's just too boring. It doesn't have that splash. It doesn't have that pomp and circumstance. Starbucks. Sure. Oof. As I told my man, Tick Breezy, we were trading right up at the hundreds. This thing does not look good. Does not look good. So I can just tell you right up the point. This is, again, whether we're willing to go long or not. It's not whether or not we're going short, whatever. We're, just, we're going long or we're not. And Starbucks has got, that, has got that basic going on right now. I don't like that basic. Jeremy, I would not be trading puts. That company looks like an absolute sham, and you get reverse splitted. Those are going to go. That IV is going to kill you. Even though you're, if you're in the money right now, I'll sell those and get out of it because the upside is not going to, it's not going to justify the downside. Plus, when you're buying puts, it's money out of account, which you want to try to avoid that, especially with stuff like that. Now, selling puts would be better if it was going to the upside. But buying puts, if you're if you're green on those, I would get the hell out and uh, trade some real options. Come join us. We'll show you how to trade some real options because that company is an absolute scam. And it looks like they're trying – they're just – they're going to end up with a reverse split. Your options are going to get screwed, and you just don't want to be any part of that, my friend. So I'm getting the hell out of that. Trade safe and get out of that right now. Right now. To gag. Cart. Yes, I will. This is interesting. Maple Bear. Is this is this Instacart? Why the hell does it say Maple Bear? Oh, pull this one up here. This is uh, Instacart, right? Yeah, 
These companies are just the scourge of the earth, though. I can't tell you how much I hate these companies. Like, you want to get mad about inflation? Talk to DoorDash, Instacart, oh, all these companies that are just inflating the price of goods out of sheer convenience. Is It's nonsense, and I, I personally can't stand them, so I guess I'm a little biased. Chart doesn't look bad, but I just hate these companies. I think they're worthless animals, but I will say this is a bullish chart. I do like this little bottom sweller here. Bottom dweller, bottom sweller. I do like that above 2410, and there's definitely some upside, but these companies are the scourge of the earth, so do what you will. But I want to give you the truth. Brings me great shame. Brings me great shame to do this because I think these companies are the absolutely most worthless scourge of the earth. Absolutely no value. Complete utter bullshit. They're just making life more difficult for the everyday consumer by making it more convenient and dramatically increasing the cost of the goods. For instance, okay, I was just placing an order for Taco Bell. Okay, it was like. It was my daughter's birthday. I was late. We just needed to eat some dinner or something. And we we're going to, or it was the day before her birthday. I need to go get some balloons. The place is going to close. My wife's like, hey, can you pick some up? Okay, I'll go to Taco Bell. It's right by there. I'll just pick it up. She's like, I'll just do DoorDash so you don't have to be gone too long. I said, oh, okay, that's reasonable. So I go in and I put my order in DoorDash. Money's just not adding up. Things just don't seem right. I'm like, this just seems like a lot for the order we're getting. I mean, I've ordered this same order a million times. It just seems like a lot. So I go in the Taco Bell app, right? Put the order in for pickup. DoorDash was arbitrarily charging me, and I'm not talking about their fees. I'm talking about the menu items themselves. They were arbitrarily charging me about 30 to 35% more on every single item without the fee. When you add in the fee, delivery surcharge and all the other bullshit, I was basically paying almost twice as much for the same food. I think the order came out to like, when I ordered through the Taco Bell app, it was like 43 bucks, right, for food for all of us. When I ordered it through DoorDash, which I didn't order, I just wanted to see what the price would be. It was like $75 once you had the tip and the, the delivery fees and everything else. So they took a $40 order and turned it into a $75 order by just driving it in a car for eight minutes. It's absolute and utter nonsense. So I don't support these businesses personally. I just don't. The only one I like is Stripe, and they're not even public yet because they've made internet commerce easier and better. They've made it more accessible. It's not just a price gouging tool. It's it's not out of sheer convenience. Those systems were impossible to build before this, so they made it accessible, right, and easy to use and integrate. Companies like DoorDash and Instacart, they're just the scourge of the earth, and that's just my opinion. Absolute garbage. I can't stand them. This chart looks good, but I just can't stand them. They don't add any value to the economy. In my opinion, this is the kind of stuff that's going to get us in trouble in the long run. Investing in companies like this, that all they have is your data, right? And your transactions. They're just reselling customer data transactions to advertising companies. That's where they're making a ton of money. And then basically screwing somebody into like a low rent delivery job for no reason that doesn't even need, need to have that job and killing other businesses as a result. So I'm, just, I'm not a fan. Sorry for the rant. Johnson & Johnson, stable dividend payer. Is it not Is it not a long-term play? I know Pookie is all about this one. Johnson & Johnson, baby. Hmm. Coming off the lows. But I will say I don't hate this. North of 151. Top of range buy with upside. I'm going to give that one a smash, man. That's a... I'm going to have to follow that one. That one's quality. I might add some of that long-term, baby. Anytime you get like a long-term play like that, dividend payer, that's just long-term outlook, and you can get it at a technical standpoint, from a technical standpoint where you have, you know, fixed, or at least an understood upside, I think that's always a good deal. FMX, I'm not. What's up, Joshy? I'm not. I never, I can't even think of this. Fomento, Economico, Mexicano. Is this like Mexican bank stock or something? Whoa. Whoa there. Whoa there. What is this? What am I looking at here? What is this? Hmm. 
consumer defensive beverages. What? Hmm. It's already hit all the price targets. This thing is booming. Honestly, I don't I don't know how there's gonna be more upside here. So unfortunately, my friend, I'm gonna have to pass on that. I just I don't see the upside here. Fortunately, it's banging. We're just late to the party, my friend. Uh, B. Diddley, we already did CVNA, my friend. You could just zoom back. I did uh, kind of, a, uh, I went a little deeper than that into Carvana. If you want to take a look at that, uh, as far as what I think the, the upside is from here when we've traded it in the past and everything else. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Walmart. Oh. So Walmart's one I've looked at quite a bit, right? So we got our long-term, I'm talking dating back to, where is that? November of 2015. We got our long-term trend, right? We've stayed pretty healthily above there for quite a while until we created a new short-term trend, which we just violated back in November of this past year, or this year, sorry. So we gapped down. We tried to find bottom 150, which it's trying, but right now I think that Walmart's just going to have to make a return return back to its home i think it's going to come down 135 to maybe 141 before we see more long upside i just think that this chart's exhausted from its incessant climb to the top so unfortunately at this moment this is one that i that i have to pass on so i'm going to go ahead and say right there uh on walmart as far as walmart's concerned uh it's pass right now I just don't see the upside here, and I don't like creating that no man's land business. Not sold enough on the downside given the recent buying, but I'm not sold enough on the upside given the positioning on the chart. So it's kind of like a purgatory, if you will. Even though buyers came in with strength, sellers have been just ripping into them over the last 12 months. So it really, let's see what Stocks Buddy says. So Stocks Buddy's a bull on the daily. Let's see what Stocks Buddy says on the monthly. Stocks Buddy's still a bull on the monthly, so it's like I might be wrong. North of 149 stocks, but he still loves it. So I'm going to give give this guy benefit of the doubt. It's really wrong, but he did alert the entry. Uh, I was at 139, went to 160. So i got to give, give him credit where it's due. I just don't think there's much more meat on the bone here. I think we've exhausted our options. All right. Uno mas. We've got about two minutes left. So those will be the last one. Zim, Zim, Zim. What in the hell is this? Zim Integrated Shipping Services. What on earth? What is this? What is this company? Oh, buyers flocked and then sellers ripped, but we still traded to the upside. I'll tell you right now, things coming down day like that on that kind of volume. Bound to see some downside after that gap up. Come back and have a rest around 750, 760, and then you'll see more upside. Um, but I would say right now that old, old Invader Zim is getting a pass. But once he has a rest, I'm interested. Oh, very high dividend. That's a different story. If you're collecting that dividend, you want to sit and hold on an undervalued stock. I, I don't think that's time to go long because we don't have a bottom priced in personally. Um, once we, if this thing breaks like above mm, 15 to 17, uh, I would say it's po it's above post pre IPO price and, and gets up there. Then yeah, maybe I think this one COVID boomed too. So probably IPO would a little more than it should have. Probably should IPO at seven, seven, eight bucks. Yeah, they were February 21. Should I IPO'd seven, eight bucks. And then it should be trading to like 2025 20, now. Instead, it went to like what? Yeah, 90 bucks, which is just crazy, man. They sold that top and killed everybody. You can see all they're selling right here. And then more right here at like a 300% return on their IPO investment. So I would watch that closely. I'd say there's still a lot of risk there on that one. All right, fine. Last one. God, SMDH. If that's even a ticker, I feel like that's code for something. That's what I thought. Is it shaking my damn head? That's what I thought. <laughs> well, there you go. So you can't find it because it's not a ticker. 
first when I typed it, I was like, wait, shaking my damn head. I've seen that. I was thinking of shake my head, and I was like, no, there's a D in there, so that's probably not it. I typed it in. It doesn't exist. Let's see. Oh, almost. Flores. Crypto? No. Indices? Economy? No. doesn't exist. So, thanks for wasting our time, Mike. We appreciate that. <laughs> All right. I love y'all. Stay blessed now. Make sure you check Mike's channel in the Discord. That man works hard. He posts all this stuff. If you want the, the written out recap, make sure to look at that channel in the Discord. If you're not in there, then you're missing out because you're just lazy and you don't care to make money, which is stupid. You should care because money is the new security, my friends. You've heard me give that pitch before. It's a different landscape with different tools. I would not mess around right here and right now with your finances. Take it very seriously. I mean this. Take it very seriously because your financial security is going to determine your food security, housing security, social security. Don't expect it if you're our age. If you're 20, 30, 40, you're, not, you're probably not getting much. If you do, those dollars aren't going to be worth much. So please, guys, take it seriously. Watch this stuff. Take this stuff to heart. My goal is to see everybody make stupid money and come up and change their life. If you haven't, then it's just not your time yet. There's the best analogy of a man in a mind, and he's been mining for gold for years until the day he finally quits, not realizing he's less than half an inch from a gold mine that would have paid for generations. So keep that stuff in mind. You don't ever want to stop a minute before the miracle happens. Everything you need is here. Join the Discord. Everything in there you can get for free. That's absolutely fantastic. It'll make a change in your life. If you can master this, you can basically install an ATM in your living room and make money for the rest of your life. For the rest of your life. And that's all I want for everybody uh, is to make that kind of money because it's definitely possible. So I love y'all. Stay blessed. Check that channel in Discord. It's got the whole recap, all the trades, and everything else. I love you guys. I'll see you later.